to God. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for tuning into the Pentecostals of Lafayette on this wonderful Sunday morning. If you would do one quick favor for us and check in and let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning, we would greatly appreciate that. You can click the link in your comments and check in you and your family or whoever you're watching with today. And we just want to stay connected with all of you on this wonderful Sunday morning. There's a lot going on around the POL and a lot of things coming up in the coming weeks. And we want to let you know that Wednesday we're going to be continuing our selfless discipleship series. However, we will be online. So be sure to tune in at seven o'clock on Wednesday night for our online discipleship series. And then next Sunday morning, I want to invite and encourage our entire POL family. Make sure you are at church next Sunday morning. It's going to be a great time together. It's Vision Sunday. It's Communion Sunday. And it's the kickoff to I Love My Church Month. You do not want to miss that. Make sure that you and your family are at the POL next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. I hope to see you there. And then we were so blessed by the ministry of Brother Michael Easter last weekend as he was with the POL. And what a great, encouraging word he delivered to our church family. And we celebrate with the two that were baptized last week as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother Easter is back with us again today. And he's with us with an anointed word for our church and for our people that are watching today. So I want to encourage you, get your minds right, get in tune, get behind the word and preach with him. Get, let that word speak to you this morning and he's going to minister to our church family. We also want to give you an opportunity to worship through giving today. There's going to be a link in the comments and if you click that link, it will allow you the opportunity to give online this morning. So as we go forward in our service today, However you feel led to do so, if you want to sing along with the, the praise team, do so. Turn that living room or that bedroom, wherever you're watching from, turn that room into your own personal sanctuary today and watch what God can do. Thank you again for tuning in this morning. We love you. We're praying for you. And we can't wait to see you all again at POL next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. God bless you. Let's worship together. In the name of Jesus. Glory, give glory to God. Hallelujah. As we go back into worship this morning, join in and let's be one sound and let's be one voice that's offering our worship and our praise unto God this morning. He is worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
recognize his presence and then we can receive anything we need from him some of you are facing difficult challenges right now if you are to give it over to him he will take care of what you're facing today he will take care of it all hallelujah god we bless you god we honor you today There's still a voice that's whispering. 
the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings, greetings, my precious brothers and sisters in what we commonly call God's country. Right there, it is such a joy, amen, to be able to be with you guys, even if it's, amen, using uh, uh, this medium of social media, live stream, and, and uh, whatever it takes, man, to get the word out. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus, all my brothers and sisters. God bless you. Amen. Saints of God, near and far. Amen. We gather together today because it is a very special day. Amen. The church was birthed. Amen. In the book of Acts, the second chapter, where we find all the, the disciples had gathered together in the upper room. Amen. Following the directions of the Lord Jesus Christ, where he had told them, amen, to tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The promise of the Father, which came in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And that started the church age of which we are a part today. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, that same church that was started on the day of Pentecost so many, many, many years ago. That's the same church that the Lord Jesus is coming back for in the very near future. And I tell you what, I believe that. I believe that with all my heart, it's going to be in the very near future. All the things around the world is testifying. We are living in the end times. And I know you've heard that so many, many times, but you've got to admit with me, there is something very different about the hour we're living in now. The one word I keep hearing over and over is unprecedented. We're living in an unprecedented hour. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, this is a time that we've never experienced before, and we probably will never experience it again, amen, because we're getting ready to get up out of this world. And in the end times, amen, all these signs are all around us, and the Bible is real, it's alive, and it's testifying. God is true. God's word can be depended on. And more now than ever, we need to get that word in our heart and in our spirit. And so I'm so excited. God has been doing marvelous things all around the world. Amen. And this, this pandemic that's been going on. And uh, many, many people are turning their lives to the Lord. And I believe God is getting us ready. He's positioning the church for a great last, great end time harvest of souls that's coming in. And I want to be a part of that, and I know you want to be a part of that, too. Praise God. And so today, amen, I'm going to uh, invite you to go with me to the word of the Lord. We're going to look to the scriptures, amen, and uh, I want to invite you to go to the book of Romans. The book of Romans, the fifth chapter, and uh, we're going to look at verse number 14 and uh, through verse number 18. Romans 5, verses 14 through 18. And let's hear what the Lord will speak to us in this incredible hour. Oh, that we are living in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, starting at verse number 14. The Apostle Paul is writing to us, and this is what he says. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Somebody say, Amen. See then that you walk circumspectly. That means walk being aware of what's going on around you. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It is important that you and I understand what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? Let's look at the next verse. Verse number 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's the will of God. That's the will of God for you. That's the will of God for me. That's the will of God for everybody. And that is to be filled with the Spirit. 
Hallelujah. I pray God's will be done. Amen. In this service today, in the next few hours, in the coming days before the rapture of the church, I pray that every man, every woman, every young person, even children, the Bible says this promise is even unto the children. Amen. And those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, it is the will of God that we be filled with the Spirit. Let's pray together. Holy, Lord, Holy Spirit of the living God, we honor you. We thank you today. You promised us, Lord, that where two or three would gather in your name, you would be right in our midst. And Father, you are here right now. God, uh, social media cannot hinder you. Time and space cannot hinder you. You feel all space. You are everywhere. You're here and you're right there. Amen. And God, I feel your Holy Spirit even now. I can feel the presence of your spirit right now. And Lord, I pray before this day is over that every empty vessel that's thirsty will be filled with your Holy Spirit. This we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God. We anticipate it in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. Praise God. Be filled with the spirit. I, I, I'm so excited because I know God is real. I, I can see the signs of the times all around me. I mean, Jesus said on one occasion that people can look at the sky and see the clouds. And just by looking at the clouds, you can tell what the weather is going to be. And then he said, how can you do that and not see the signs all around us and not be aware that we are living in the end days? The kingdom of God is at hand. And with all of these signs of the end times, the, the Lord told us there'll be uh, wars and there'll be rumors of wars. A nation will rise against nation. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. He said there'll be signs in the heavens and signs upon the earth. One of those signs, he said, pestilence. Pestilence is a worldwide um, a pandemic, actually. That's what a pestilence is. And we are experiencing that now today. All oh, the signs are everywhere. And I pray that people's eyes will be open, their ears will be unstopped, that they can see and hear what the Lord is doing in these end times. But with all these signs, with all these prophecies being fulfilled right here in our all around us, there is another sign, glory to God, amen, that the world may not recognize, but you and I had better not, not recognize it. And that sign is this, in the Bible, the, the Lord said in the book of Isaiah, in the last days, saith God, in the last days, saith God, I shall pour out of my, of my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, God said in the end times, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm going to pour out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, the power and the anointing and the spirit of God is being poured out all over the world. People are being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, just like they did in the Bible. And it's happening on every continent on the face of the earth. It's even invading denominations. There have been groups of people that have rejected the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They have taught against speaking in tongues. Can you imagine that? Amen. And their and their their denominations and people in, in different uh, groups and and are being filled with the Holy Ghost. They are experiencing the outpouring of the Spirit. And all what God is looking for is a hungry heart. Amen. He said, "Blessed are they that hunger. Blessed are they that thirst. And they shall be filled." The baptism of the Holy Ghost is being poured out now upon all humankind. And brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, and all you that are far off, today is your day. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that you that you be filled with the Spirit, that you don't walk away empty because the comforter is here. The baptizer of the Holy Ghost is here. Glory to God. Let's, let's look together in the scriptures at what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say about the Holy Ghost? I want to invite you to go to John, the 14th chapter. John chapter 14, 
starting at verse number 16. This is what the Lord said about the Holy Ghost. At verse number 16, Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. You see, Jesus is the comforter. He comforted them. Those disciples had no worries. They didn't care about anything. As long as Jesus was with them, they had no issues, no problems. But see, Jesus, as a man, the son of man on the earth, he could only be here for a limited amount of time. And so he was telling them, I must go away. But I'm praying the Father to send you another comforter. Amen. The comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, this comforter, the Bible says, even the spirit of truth. You know who Jesus said he was? Jesus said, I am the truth. This is his spirit. He said, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. He's talking to his disciples. You know him, because he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus said, here I am, right here. I'm right here with you. You know, you know who the spirit of truth is. Because he's with you, but he's going to not just be with you, but in the next coming days, he shall be in you. He's going to dwell in you. I will not leave you comfortless, Jesus said. I will come to you. The Lord was letting them know, I'm going to come to you in the power, in the presence, in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then a few first verses down in verse number 25. Listen to what the Lord said. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He will bring all things to your remembrance and whatsoever I have said unto you. Hallelujah. Jesus was telling them the comforter is on the way. The spirit of truth. I will not leave you comfortless. It's going to be me that's going to come to you. Oh, glory to God. We need that same spirit. He had commanded them, tarry in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem. Amen. When he ascended up on high, amen, before 500 witnesses, he told them to wait for the promise of the Father, which shall endue you with power. He said, wait for the Holy Ghost, that you will receive power to be a witness. Oh, glory to God. And those disciples, they went to the upper room and they waited, they prayed and they, and they worshiped God. And then the Bible says in Acts chapter two, when the day of Pentecost, that day we're celebrating right now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come on the 50th day of the feast of weeks, when that day came suddenly, woo, I love it when God moves suddenly, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the room where they were sitting and they appeared under them cloven tongues like as a fire. And they all began to speak in other tongues as the spirit of God gave them the utterance. It was unprecedented. It was powerful. It was the beginning of the New Testament church. Glory to God. And when the apostles were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the apostle Peter spoke and preached the first sermon of the uh, New Testament church. And in his sermon, he talked about this, this power. He talked about all the prophecies that, that God has spoken in the Old Testament. And now this, which you see and hear, has come upon the world. The Holy Ghost, the Comforter had come. And when the multitude heard Peter preach that message, they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, you need to repent. You need to make your mind up. You're not going to live in sin anymore. You're going to receive God in all his fullness, a complete turnaround. And then 
be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, this promise is to you, verse 39, and it's to your children. It's to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Oh, hallelujah. At, that Holy Ghost began to pour out on the day of Pentecost. On that very day, 3,000 people got baptized and the Holy Ghost been falling ever since. Amen. It's been pouring out ever since. But in the day and the hour that we're living in now, it's being poured out in greater dimension, amen, than has ever been poured out in the history of the world. God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Glory to God. And you, you can receive that same spirit. You have to receive that same spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus in the third chapter of St. John, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, Mr. Religious Man, amen, you are a Pharisee of the Pharisees, and it don't matter, amen, how many degrees or licenses you may have or what position in the church you may hold, except a man is born again of the water and of the spirit. You cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. You must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, the scripture says in the book of Romans chapter 8, and I want you to watch this very closely beginning in verse number 5, what the Apostle Paul teaches about being filled with the Holy Ghost and the necessity of being filled with the Spirit. It, it, it's not just a blessing. It is essential if you want to make heaven your home. Romans chapter 8, if you will, starting at verse number 5. The Apostle Paul teaches us, for they that are after the flesh, what do they do? They do mind the things of the flesh. They pay attention to fleshly things. But they that are, uh, are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the fleshly mind, the carnal mind, the natural mind, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You know, that means you can't serve God with, the, with your natural mind. You got to have a spiritual, amen, a spiritual mind. You got to have a spiritual heart. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but ye are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, if the spirit of God dwell in you, then you are in the spirit. Now, now here's the, this is the verse part. This is the part I want you to get. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And you can say, I belong to God. I'm a child of a God. I believe in God. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are none of his. So my brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, it is important. Let me emphasize, it is essential that you be filled with the Spirit. Amen. So my question to you today is this. Have you received it? Have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? That is a very important question that you need to answer. Now, I've asked people this question before. A lot of folks says right away, yes, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, then I ask them, how do you know you feel with the Holy Ghost? Well, my pastor told me, no, 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 no. That's not evidence that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. How do you know you are filled with the Holy Ghost? Uh, well, I just believe in my heart and I just confess with my mouth. No, no, no. That's not the evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. How do you know when you are filled with the Holy Ghost? Well, I just had a feeling come over me. It's hard to describe. No, 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 no. There is a Bible way of knowing you've received the Holy Ghost. Now, in Acts chapter 19, 
beginning in verse number one, we find some believers, certain disciples. These people were believers. Amen. And yet they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 19, starting at verse number one. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Glory to God. These were people in our, in our modern day time. They would be church going folk. Paul finds certain disciples and he said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? No doubt you are a believer. It's no doubt you're serving God. But that doesn't mean you've received the gift of the Spirit. That doesn't mean you are filled with the Spirit. So Paul asked them the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said unto him, we not, have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We, we, we don't know anything about the Holy Ghost. Well, if you have not received the Holy Ghost, if you don't have any good teaching on the Holy Ghost, well, the next question is, how are you baptized? Because in truth, your baptism in water and the baptism of the Spirit, they work together. Ye must be born again of the water and of the spirit. So if you don't have the spirit right, maybe it's because you didn't get the water baptism right. Oh, hallelujah. So, so, so how were you baptized? Let me ask you that. How were you baptized? Think about that for a minute. Let, let's go back to the scriptures. Let's look at what they said. They said, we, we've not so much as heard whether to be in the Holy Ghost. And then Paul said unto them, were, how were you baptized? Amen. And they said, unto John's baptism. We were baptized by John the Baptist. Paul then said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. And this is what John said when he baptized the folks. So it is important that you know what your pastor said. What did your pastor say when he baptized you? Paul said, this is what John said. Paul, he said unto the people, they should believe on him, speaking of Jesus Christ, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized again. Mind you, they were baptized, but this time it was in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Listen to me. How were you baptized? What did your pastor say over you when he baptized you? Amen. Did he say anything? Was it important enough that you remembered what he said? Most people were baptized with the preacher saying I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Most people were baptized that way, but no one in the Bible was baptized that way. If you were baptized and the man said in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you probably have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost the way they did in the Bible. You have to be baptized the way they were baptized in the Bible. So when they heard that they should be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Look what the Bible says. They were baptized in that name, in the name of the Lord Jesus. They got the baptism right. Then when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And guess what happened? They spake with tongues and they prophesied. Glory to God. That's how it's done in the church. The same church is the same church that Jesus is coming back for. That same church is here today. And we believe and teach and preach the same way it was believed and preached and taught in the Holy Scriptures. So let me ask you, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you ever spoken tongues as the Spirit give the utterance? You've not been taught about it. You're not familiar with it. Well, let me tell you something. 
It is for all of us. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, in verse number 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. Glory, hallelujah. And then he goes on to tell them, one of the signs is they shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. That's not just for a select group. That's not just for uh, uh, people involved in ministry. That's for all believers. It's a sign for all of us. Amen. When we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? Have you been filled yet? Oh, glory to God. It's a wonderful experience. Wonderful experience. Let me ask you a question. Do you know where you were 38 years ago? 38 years ago, do you know where you were? Now, wait a minute. Some of you weren't even born 38 years ago. But for those of you that were around 38 years ago, let me ask you this. Can you recall where you were and what you were doing on Sunday, November 8th, 1981? Hmm. Guess what? I can. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. That Sunday morning. That was my first service in an apostolic church. My first experience being in an atmosphere where the Spirit of God was moving. And I'll never forget it. I had brought a friend of mine with me and we came to church. I was curious. I was excited. I had already been baptized. I had gotten baptized Tuesday night. Amen. And so I had the baptism right. And now I was ready to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And my friend and I, we were sitting in the back row of the church, and I never heard such preaching. It was so powerful. It was so anointed, and it blessed my soul. And that word got a hold of me and, and a hold of my buddy, and he couldn't contain himself. He jumped up, started shouting and screaming and hollering, and, man, he ran down that center aisle. He fell on the steps of that altar, and he began to cry out to God, Whoa, my Lord, something got a hold of him. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And I was like, what is this? This is incredible. And folks got around him and began to pray for him and lay hands on him. And oh, my word, the power of God began to move and they began to, to help him and, and to repent. Amen. I said, brother, you, you, you feel the power of God. That's the spirit of God. You need to repent of your sins and tell God you're sorry. Oh, he was just screaming and crying and bawling and crying on. And I walked down there and I started looking at what was happening and I started praying for him and doing what everybody else was doing. And nobody was praying for me, but I was just, you know, laying my hands on him and watching what other people were saying and doing. And, and I was telling him, man, just worship God, just praise the Lord. Because see, when you praise God, that, that invites the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says the spirit of God inhabits the praises of his people. And the more you praise him, the more of his spirit comes down. The more you, you articulate worship using your voice, your mouth, and turn up the volume. Oh, glory to God. The spirit began to come down. And man, the spirit was being poured all over that, that altar area. And my friend, he he really didn't, uh, 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 you know, he really didn't participate with everybody. He was into his own little world. He was screaming, crawling, crying, and bawling. And, and I just began to praise and worship God. And the more I praised, the better I felt. And the more I worshiped, the more I felt something like a warm cloud all around me. And I just loved it. And I began to worship, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then in the midst of my praise, glory to God, I just felt this unction to come over me and I, my, my tongue felt heavy and, and, I, and I, I just lifted up my voice and I began to speak in other tongues and I could hear other people around me speaking in tongues and it was, you know, it was foreign, but yet it didn't seem strange. And the more I, I uttered these sounds, the more powerful the presence of God became. And, and I remember when he was teaching me that the spirit of the Lord will fill you up. And, and it'll be in you and overflowing out of you. And, and you worship and keep continue to speak. But you don't speak any English. You just let that new language flow out. And I'm going to tell you, it happened. It happened just like the Bible said it would. 
and I began to speak in another tongue, another language, and my understanding was unfruitful, but the spirit inside of me was just overflowing. It was beautiful, and I knew, I knew I was in contact with God in a more perfect way because the spirit maketh intercession. And, and, and speak those things that we ought to be speaking but don't know. So the Spirit helps us in our infirmity. Oh, my God, it was awesome. Hallelujah, God. What a, I feel it right now. It's, it's here. It is there where you are. That same Holy Ghost Spirit, hallelujah, that fell on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, is falling all around us even right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray for a moment. Let's just worship him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. Your Holy Ghost, your power is resident. It's here right now. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's overflowing. Come on, come on, lift your hands. When you lift your hands to God, you're surrendering to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I know you're real. I know you're here. I worship you. I praise you, Lord. God, I want to be filled. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, I both those. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even now, it's difficult to speak English because the Spirit of God is so prevalent. It's so powerful in me right now. And that same Spirit is moving upon you. If you would just repent of your sins, if you would just make a decision, I'm, I'm tired of the world. There's nothing in this world, amen, worth missing Jesus over. I want to be saved. I want the truth. I want to be born again. And you got to make your mind up that you're going to be obedient to the Lord and God will help you. He's the comforter. He will guide you. He will strengthen you to live the way he designed for you to live. But you need to repent. You need to repent of your sins. You need to put down your ways and say, God, not my will, thy will be done. And when you repent of your sins, the way John the Baptist said, bring forth fruit, bring evidence that you have really made a change and be obedient and be baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's in the name of Jesus Christ because in the name of the Lord Jesus is what brings the remission, the washing away of all your sins. So you got to get the baptism and water correct. Amen. And the promise is to you, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, in closing, let me reflect back to our opening scripture. Amen. Amen. In the book of Ephesians chapter 18, where this is a command. It's not a recommendation. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment that we be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to share with you the same verse in uh, uh, a different translation, the New International Version. The New International Version renders Ephesians 5.18 this way. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. The New Living Translation gives it a little different wording. It says, don't be drunk with wine because ha, that will ruin your life. I like that. And that's true. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill you and control you. Hallelujah. And then finally, the Message Bible puts it this way. Don't drink a whole lot of wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God. Huge droughts of him. I really like that. Drink the Spirit of God. And get all you can get. Be filled. Huge droughts of him. Hallelujah. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Glory to God. Jesus said, if any man thirst. If any man thirst. Woman, young person, child. He said, come unto me and drink. 
and out of your belly, out of your innermost being, shall flow rivers of this wonderful living water, which is the Holy Spirit. It shall be in you. That's God's will. That's God's plan. Be filled with the Spirit. Let's pray. Holy God of heaven, there are still men and women and young people. There are still children, Lord God, yet to be filled. God, if we don't have your Spirit, then we don't belong to you. And it's our desire that we belong to you. We want to be sealed the promise of the Holy Ghost and let every heart that desires you God be full of your spirit today hallelujah we thank you Lord God it is your perfect will and this we pray Lord in the name of Jesus Christ let your will be done be filled with the spirit and I believe this entire church, God has given this word to this church and is saying today it's time to respond. These altars are open. I want to invite everybody to come down and pray. If you, if you are broken in this place, if you want to feel healing, if you, whatever, whatever is in your life, there's healing, there's pain, there's hurt. We just heard a word that said if we will yield to God's spirit, that he's going to use you. He's going to take your weakness. And what you thought is a weakness, he's going to turn it into a strength to reach your family, to impact a city, to change hearts, to change minds. That's it. Would you come forward? We're going to pray together. Maybe you want to bring your family. Maybe you want to bring a friend. Or if you don't want to come alone, that's perfectly fine. Invite somebody with you. We're going to pray together. Our worship team may lead us in a song here, but we're going to, we're going to seek the face of God for just a few minutes. We're going to tell God, Lord, I'm broken. I have a past and I have hurt and I have struggled. But God, today I'm turning that over to you. God, I, I want your spirit to overtake me. God, I want to yield to your spirit today. God, fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. I may have never experienced that by evidence of speaking in tongues, but today, God, I want to feel that in feeling. I want to feel your power take over my life today. Would you let that be your prayer right now? God, use my brokenness. God, use my hurt. God, take my pain. And when I look as a weakness, God, let it be a strength. Oh, Jesus. Oh, his promises are yes and amen. What is it you need to turn over to him today? What is it you need to let go of this morning? What is it that you need to put in his hands and say, God, let your will be done? Because he still has a plan for you.
story's not 